Welcome to another episode of Data Journeys. This is where we come to learn from data leaders. And today I'm really excited to talk to Jack. Jack from Reddit, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, my pleasure. Really looking forward to it for now. So Jack, you are the VP of data at Reddit. You're a very experienced data analytics leader. You were the VP of analytics at Walmart. And in 2009, you even were a data analyst at Google. So you've done a lot with your career. Let's start with the basic, what you're doing today. What does Reddit do? Reddit's a community of communities. It's a place where individuals find experiences built around their interests, their hobbies, their passions. And what we're all about is about how do we bring community and belonging to the world? And that's always been a mission I've been incredibly excited by. But when you look around today, that feels like a particularly important thing for us to do. That's excellent. So 100,000 plus communities, 52 million daily active users. So that's got to lead you to a lot of data. So let's talk a little bit about these use cases. Sure. What are you trying to do with data? How are you innovating with data today inside Reddit? Yeah, well, with that kind of traffic, you can imagine the volume is wild. And so we're ingesting north of 55, probably closer to 60 billion events a day. And from a technical standpoint, how do we make sense of it? From a business standpoint, though, which is you know where the magic is made here, as, as I'm sure you know well, from the business standpoint, the question is, how do we make decisions better, faster? So that's internally in the company, how do we make decisions better, faster about the things we need to do in terms of strategy, the choices we need to make? And then on behalf of users, when we think about things like recommendations and data-powered products, how do we make decisions better, faster to help them find communities more effectively and faster? And so there are a few things here. One, you have a lot of data. You've yes. also grown tremendously, 2x uh, growth. You're also preparing for 10x growth. So you know you got even more data and it's kind of compounding on itself. Yeah. And you're also launching a thousand plus experiments per year. So yeah. how do you manage that complexity? And what are the specific use cases across anomaly detection or, or user data that you're driving to make sure that this data is serving organization drive bottom line growth? Yeah, you know, uh, you mentioned some great examples in terms of experimentation. Obviously, for a product like ours, when we're hitting so many millions of people, we need to understand the impact of everything that we do. We have a huge responsibility as a social network to think about what is our impact on the world and experimentation and a really close sense of for all that volume coming in, what data is meaningful, what data is true and how we interact with that and how we react to that is it's unbelievably important to be able to serve that key role. In terms of anomaly detection, I think you're, you're flirting with uh, data quality conversation mm -hmm. there, which as you might imagine, takes up a, a good part of our headspace at any given time, because we want to say, how do we make decisions better and faster? But how can we possibly do that unless we know that the data is legitimate and that it's that it's completely there? Can we talk a little bit about how you're using data to serve particular communities inside Reddit, like your employees specifically? Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about sales, marketing, finance, mm -hmm. and how they're taking advantage to the such massive data to make better decisions, what are some of the top use cases there? Of course. So we mentioned experimentation, uh, which is sort of just a, a subset of the overall class of things we might need to, to use for product data. So every ads team, every product team, they're thinking really extensively about how we use data to inform our strategies. And I want to be clear that I'm saying data informed. I think data driven is a great sort of buzzword, but from a vocab perspective, we want to use data to inform our decisions and think about our overall strategic backdrop. There are sometimes decisions we want to make that when we have the data, we're saying, look, I know the data says this, but we know this is the way that we want to take the company. That's okay, as long as we're looking at it and making that conscious choice. Data That's a great best practice. Just thinking yeah. about the difference of, of informed versus, the, uh, versus driven. Um, let's talk about maybe an experiment where you're particularly proud of you know, the experiment, how it was rolled out and the department that used that, you know, the data, what kind of decisions did they end up making? We're running so many at any given time, hard to dial in on a specific one. But I think recently we are rolling out a new class of algorithms and personalization for our home feed. And mm -hmm. this 
huge deal for Reddit. Reddit, historically, the home feed has just been an aggregation of your subscriptions. But what we're doing here is two things. One, we're starting to surface more of your subscriptions, the things you're, the communities you're subscribed to. We're starting to surface more content for more different communities. And we're also starting to insert recommended content that we think will be interesting to you, which obviously isn't a novel idea on the web more broadly, but in the Reddit context is quite different. And so you might imagine our initial concern might be how will some of our older users respond? We've had some users who've been with us for 15 years, how they respond to a core change like this. But, you know, guessing and worrying about that isn't great to run a business. And so instead, when we're running these tests, we actually were able to see both from quantitative and qualitative feedback that our older users are loving it. The engagement is higher because people are talking about they've they're seeing subscriptions if they're subscribed to many communities they're seeing some content that they haven't seen in years and on the recommendations front they didn't think there was more content for them to discover they thought they had sort of had their curated list and yet here they're finding new things to engage with and it's keeping the site fresh for them it's keeping the experience fresh and so that's incredibly exciting for us and is a great example of where you know you can choose to worry about risk or you can choose to really lean into opportunity thoughtfully and have the information at your disposal to make a good choice. And we are incredibly excited about the gains we're seeing in terms of people subscribing to new communities, engaging more with the app, engaging more with different content, posting more content. It's all been very positive. So everything really is directed towards making sure that you're engaging the community providing with fresh, relevant content, maybe helping them discover things that communities they should join, users they should engage with that they might not have thought about before. Absolutely. And by the way, doing so though with an eye also on safety metrics. You know, yep. I think it's very easy to sort of hack your way into engagement growth, but I think we all have seen where that can become really dangerous. And so you know, the other thing I think we're really thoughtful about and very proud of is in our data, we're making very clear any potential negative impact to communities and to people. And those things you know, would absolutely stop us from rolling out any of these changes, but we've seen great results there as well. These are safe, positive mechanisms to increase engagement. So now we've talked about engaging. What about internal communities? I'm thinking more about you know your internal teams and how they leverage data to make better decisions. What are some of the use cases that you're dealing with here where you, you feel like you've innovated? Well, when we're thinking about helping people make decisions, uh, we have a lot of different places where that occurs. Obviously, there's internally the strategic level. How does the organization make great decisions about what we're doing? There's also decisions as they relate to the consumer. So things about how we generate engagement or how we create more community or how we get people to create more communities and create a space where they feel comfortable doing so. And then obviously we have advertisers. And so when we think about advertisers, how do we actually run experiments and help advertisers understand the impact of running on our platform and see the value of being able to reach our many communities? Now, all of these areas, we need systems that are able to talk in a consistent way to different audiences to help them make different types of decisions, but do so in a way that shares a common sense of truth. And that is, at the end of the day, if we can solve for that, and we've done a great job, but obviously, as you know, that makes it sound a lot easier than it is. Let's talk a little bit about your your best practices here, because we've we've talked about the use cases. Sure. Now we want to drill into what you've learned, uh, positive and negatively, throughout your experience, not just at Reddit, but at Walmart and other companies before. Yeah. yeah. So maybe let's start with the positive. What what's the piece of advice you want to give everyone that must absolutely start with or never ignore? One thing that's been consistent from uh, from Reddit and and it back into Walmart and other places is. Privacy and security have to be a top level concern. It is much easier to focus on how a system works in terms of its speed, its responsiveness, its uptime. And you can put out great stuff technologically there, but these aren't neutral systems. You know, once you're carrying private information, once users trust you to offer private information, either the things they talk about, the communities they participate in, or in previous lives, the things that they purchase, 
you know, that is precious information and taking that seriously and having that be a top level concern, it's unbelievably critical. And so for us, the way that that is actually manifested is we've built a specific team, which is the user data team. And that team is made up of data scientists, data engineers, other backend software engineers. So we've made it so it can be a contained team that can get things done themselves so they can move with speed and they can move with clarity. And they're creating the access for all user data for our other teams, for our advertising targeting, for our consumer ML teams, for any team that needs to access user data, consistent ways of accessing it, safe ways of accessing it that only offer what that system needs and nothing extra. That investment has been incredibly crucial for us and it allows us to operate actually with more speed because we don't need to guess, we don't need to onboard other stuff, we have consistent ways where if I'm building new systems somewhere in the company, I know, okay, I just talk to user data, I get the data I need and my, and my service will work. That's an amazing best practice. So often, people often talk about privacy and, and security, but it's difficult to think about, okay, how do I operationalize this? And in your case, Absolutely. a central user team with data scientists, with analysts that are kind of enabling the rest of the company uh, sounds like something that's really working well for you. What about data quality? I mean, often Ugh. we talk about data quality. I'm sure you're dealing with so much data. You've got to go through that yourself. How did you tackle that problem uh, with such a large volume of information? We could have spent all our time just talking about data quality, right? It's such a huge topic because ultimately all of the things I talked about before, none of them work unless data quality is working. And, you know, some earlier tech companies feel like they don't have to deal with this as much because services are new. Reddit at 15, you know, we have some legacy systems and we have new systems. So this is a, you know, this is a real concern. But honestly, anyone with, with big volume has to be thinking about this a lot. And for us, I think it was a combo of ideas. There's both every team needs to take on the onus of this to some extent and say, I'm responsible for the quality of the data that my system outputs. Because data is so valuable, we want to treat the how the user experience or the advertiser experience or things like that works as being of equal importance to what is the data that comes out of it. Is it high quality? Is it the data that we need? Because ultimately, they're equally important to us. So. We can say that and that's fine, but we need to create tools then that make it easy for those teams, tools and processes that make it easy for those teams to actually operationalize that. So, you know, sand testing tools, a lot of mechanisms for people to test new features before we're pushing things out to the apps. Those are critical features there. But then also, look, everybody's going to make mistakes. So we need to have great anomaly detection. We need to have great rules and systems to be able to interpret, are we seeing the right things come through? And then even after all of that, that's great. Okay, now we've convinced people they need to do it. We've given them the tools to be able to do it. We're catching the stuff that's falling through the cracks. But look, for companies that have been around for longer, there are surfaces that are entirely unowned. So what happens when a surface like that starts having a data quality issue? Or what happens when a, a very core top metric that is sort of above what a lot of other teams are working on needs adjustments. So for us, there would be something like screen views or time on site. In that case, we also have staffed a team who's sort of focused on, on being a SWAT team of sorts on jumping into these situations where it needs direct support and we need to make sure it's done right. Because you know we can't afford to get into a two month long discussion with six teams to figure out who's gonna fix this thing. It's just gotta be right. We have to be able to have this information correct, accurate, fast to be able to make decisions. It's a competitive space and it's a space where we want to provide great stuff to our users. So this is a great example of both best practices. You have both the technology implementation, but you also have the team to enable you to actually operationalize the changes that are required. What about the opposite? What are some of the mistakes that you've witnessed throughout your career that you really want to warn people and say, just avoid these things because they'll get you in trouble? I think that uh, some people think of data as being adjacent to software engineering in some ways. And, and that's in part because there are some specialties in each area. But in reality, the things that I think are most problematic in most data teams are those where they're ignoring some great software engineering best practices. So one of those is trying to make one service do too many things. 
I think there's a huge temptation in scope creep to have your, you know, you have some huge service that's doing a ton of ingestion and cleaning and oh, there's anomaly detection. Oh, and you can, it throws off nice reporting about what's going on and there's different access for different types of users and there's governance. And at, at a certain point, you're gonna release this thing like in four years and all the technologies moved on and you needed all these things earlier. So splitting this up into individual services and having the ability to sort of iterate through each of these things, having the ability to really understand what each smaller service is outputting and inputting to be able to see when you have issues, how you fix those things. You know, maybe not the most novel advice in the world in the software engineering context, but I still see data teams make this mistake so frequently of wanting to sort of have one ring to rule them all. And it's, uh, it's a dangerous game. I think you know it's it's very useful because I think as technology evolves, I think it's very tempting, right, to yeah. bring in all these services and building this gigantic you know system that ultimately becomes unmanageable and probably is just not effective at doing what you want it to do in the first place. So I think it's actually really really useful uh, advice. W what uh, what about other uh, advice that you might have that you would think you see people making mistakes mm -hmm. uh, left and right on this? So the other one is a little bit about relationships. And I think a lot of data teams take the role of just inheriting the requirements from other teams of saying, you know, another team says, I, I want to start this service to do thing X. Here's the level of access I need, the latency, whatever. And a lot, of, I see a lot of data teams sort of saying like, okay, great, let's do this. But in reality, Sometimes those upstream teams are not actually well positioned to make some of those choices and can add a tremendous amount of complexity or a tremendous amount of development time to services that probably aren't helping the business overall. And so I'd say a really critical idea here is knowing when to step in and more heavily influence other teams' decisions when it comes to data. And so sometimes the right answer is, you know what, you need streaming and it needs to be this amount of data. Sure, like we're going to find ways to make that work. And other times it's going to be, hey, you want us to be able to do this, but it's going to take two months of extra work to ingest that last 5% of events. And that's crazy. That's crazy. We all have such important work to do. You actually need to change your system to throw off only these new types of events, or you need to change the system to adhere in these various ways. I think that conversation, I don't hear it as frequently as I would hope, you know, between teams about what are the ways where we need to adapt versus what are the ways where we need to set the standard and having a really healthy balance of those things, it creates a much faster overall engineering organization. Interesting best practice, you know, in the world where we have more and more technology, what I'm getting from you is, you know, people make decisions, collaboration matters, uh, discipline around engineering. And so I think the foundational pillars uh, are still very relevant. Uh, Jack, uh, you know, I feel like I've learned a ton from you, you use your teams, your SWAT teams around data quality, how to not forget the basics of engineering. Those are great lessons for our audience uh, to learn from you. Thank you again so much for taking the time to talk to us today. If you want to find out more for stories just like this, click on the link down below. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.